Hello again. Uh, we're doing natural logarithms here, and this is a little introduction before we actually talk a little bit about natural logarithms. They follow a very similar pattern of logarithms, uh, except with natural logarithms you have something called base e. And e is an irrational number in mathematics. It's, uh, you know, irrational means it just goes on forever and ever, but it, it has this like striking correlation that's really quite cool. And it's approximately 2.71828, you know, and it keeps going and going and going. And the graph of it looks something like this, you know where at uh, 0 it's 1, and at 1 it's 2.78. And uh, natural log of e like, looks like this, probably not perfect, but you know, it's, it's, it's inverse. And uh, you know, uh, here's the hypothetical, like y equals uh, e to the x. If you want to figure out um, you know, it's inverse, switch the x and the y, but you've got to solve for your y, you can't solve for your x. So what you do is you do something called the natural log, which is notated like this equals e to the y. And the natural log has a base of e. Now, if it has a base of e and the power, it follows the same rules of uh, logarithms. Really quite cool. So y equals natural log base e, mind you, because it's always base e, of x. And that's this graph right here, this brown one right here. Uh, y equals e to the x is this one right here. This and this are the same thing. This is in exponential form. This is in uh, natural uh, natural log form, logarithmic form, natural logarithmic form. Yeah, maybe that's how I'd say it. And actually, e is very fascinating. How do I arrive at this number? And here's a strictly hypothetical, but it's actually pretty cool. Let's say you invest uh, money in a bank, and if you invest money in a bank and you put a dollar in, like it, it stands for. Well, I'll, I'll make a comparison later. And you invest it at 100 percent for a year. Uh, if you compound it yearly, which means you wait between interest periods for one year, you're going to get two dollars back. Now, if you compound it more frequently than one year, which means like you make uh, interest payments come off uh, faster than in one year, what happens is the interest accumulates with the, the principal and you get slightly more. So if you compound it once a year, uh, you get two dollars. And if you compound it you know, like twice a year, you get more than two dollars. And if you compound it, you know, like monthly, even more. And if you compound it daily, even more. Hourly, even more. Uh, you know, every minute, even more. If you compound it continuously, it's always compounding over and over and over and over again. What happens is you get approximately two dollars and seventy-one eight two and blah 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 cents. And basically, what it is is it's it's a it's a self-efficient function. And you know, like it took me a long time to realize that it's like it's like a function that always grows. You know, you start here, and then as you uh, go further, you keep progressing and progressing and progressing and progressing. It's like what would happen if something was uh, taking care of itself? If it was like a perpetual motion model, which is actually very interesting because you could do this with money, but you could actually look at it as population. If you have a population and you're not suffering from infant mortality rates and you know wars and a lot of other stuff, what happens to the population as you let it grow? And you don't set limitations. And i.e., like in a developed nation, uh, that's actually its own form of a, a, a limitation because if you want to become uh, more affluent, more acclimated with uh, other things around you, uh, generally you don't want. Uh, well, generally people don't have as many kids because kids cost a lot of resources. And in uh, industrialized nations, that's what you see. You see kind of like a, a cap on uh, uh, kids in a family, whereas in developing nations, there's many kids, etc. And with the invention of medicine, it kind of like uh, uh, helps this E function going along. But it's very interesting. If something was self-sustaining and just kind of took care of itself over and over and over again, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's an E function. And if you look at the population of the entire world from like 1900 until now, we went from like one billion to seven billion people, like and that's kind of like an E function. It's you know it's growing exponentially, but before that time, it was growing very gradually in comparison. So that's really cool. Uh, I like to also equate it to like you know uh, children when they're young, they're very self-sufficient and they learn, and their brains are like sponges. And if you teach like the right stuff, they absorb information quicker and quicker and quicker and quicker. But I mean, there's always a cap on it too, because as you get older, that that doesn't actually happen. Your your brain doesn't necessarily grow as fast anymore. It kind of there's kind of a cap put on it, interest are in there, et cetera, et cetera. But you know, it's like it's it's a self-perpetuating function. And I always found that to be very cool. Like it's a natural phenomenon that occurs, and there's a function that's uh, that, that's given to them. And it's basically this number 2.71828 uh, to the power of x, how it grows. Uh, so with that said, we're gonna go ahead and try a couple problems with uh, natural logs or well, natural log, rhythmic functions, natural logs.
and see how it goes. So that's my little introductory lesson on natural logs. I hope that was helpful because I really think that's actually quite fascinating to say the least. Uh, with that said, have a good day. Goodbye.